Are you considering a career in software testing? Watch this video first before making any decision. <laughs> so I saw a lot of really bad software testing career videos on YouTube and they, they seem to be, hi, we're a big consultancy and we want to recruit really cheap staff for our software testing team. And that could be you if you're creative and imaginative. And I thought, you know, really, <laughs> Let's have a look at software testing as a career from a reality perspective. I've been doing this for 20 plus years, so I'm going to go over what I've learned and what I see now. Now, one of the good things about software testing is there, there's, there is a lot to learn, right? Over the course of your career, you have a chance to become incredibly technical, deep diving into protocols, looking at how systems work, learning databases, looking at all the HTTP traffic, figuring out how browsers work, looking at all the different programming languages, see how to test those, doing performance testing, security testing, automating applications. You can test under the covers. You can do really technical testing from the, the front end, or you can focus on the people. You can look at the requirements. You can look at the management aspects. You can look at how people interact. You can help people test better rather than just do testing. Or you can do both, right? There is no limit here in what you want to do. When I started doing software testing, the reason I went in testing, because I started as a programmer and I was a good programmer and I was writing commercial software. And I moved into testing because it gave me the chance to do programming and do design and do testing and do management and do the, it gave, it was that thing that spanned the entire life cycle. So software testing has a lot of opportunities if you are interested in software. I think that's the key thing here. If you're interested in people and the requirements and the relationships, your software testing is going to edge over into uh, business analysis and that's fine or edge over into management and that's fine. There's a lot of overlaps. There's a lot of spaces to move in here. But because software testing has all those opportunities, it can take a long time to learn and software testing is fundamentally a skill and there is an enormous amount to learn. Some people seem to start or focus on software testing because it's the stepping stone to becoming a programmer. To be honest, if you want to be a programmer, start with being a programmer. You're going to find it a lot easier to become a programmer if you learn how to program and code and focus in on the design and the programming parts. If you're in a good company and you are learning how to be a tester and you are automating and you're learning how to code, then there might be a career route naturally into programming if that's what you want. But don't start in software testing because you think it's an easy into the industry and it will help you become a programmer. More likely than not, if that's your viewpoint, you will get stuck on a software testing level that you can't advance because you're not really interested in testing, or you will end up becoming a, an automator rather than a tester or a programmer. And that might work, but I think if you want to do software testing, you have to be interested in helping people make software work, communication, and trying to find the problems in software that are hard. So it's a, it's a problem investigation and ex experimentation mindset. So in order to get started in software testing, getting started with no money whatsoever, just read everything on the internet. So read all the free testing magazines, look at all the people that they list, look at them on Twitter, go and read their websites, follow everyone that's on all the Twitter lists, subscribe to the Ministry of Testing blog aggregator, get as much information as humanly possible and just immerse yourself in it, go onto YouTube, watch every video, but don't just focus in on a single person, look around. YouTube has got so many conference talks on there. You can watch every conference talk that is related to software testing, just everything. And then as you get into your career, keep doing that, right? That's the focus. We have to continually learn, continually watch videos, conference talks, books. Now the books that helped me, these, remember I'm old now, so these books are a little bit they're not the most modern, right? But to me, they're still the most valuable. This book, Boris Beiser, Software Tests and Techniques. This was my Bible for a year. I went through this. I did every exercise. This is probably the most important software testing book I've read because one of the things we have to do as software testers is learn the fundamental techniques that underpin our craft. And there's a bunch of books that will cover that. So pick one or more or many of them. But I encourage you to read as much as you can. This is essentially a process book. Testing computer software by Kainer Falk and 
Guyen, I think that's how you pronounce his name. This is a process book. It teaches you the processes around testing and some of the mindsets around testing. Um, it doesn't necessarily cover the, the techniques like that Bizer does, but this is a, a good overview book. This is an experience-based book, Lessons Learned in Software Testing by uh, Ken Kenner, James Back and Brett Petticord. This is a book to read to learn how to think about testing and how people in the real world think about testing and to cause you to think about how are you testing the software and is it the way you want. But read every book you can get your hands on. But read as much free material because I'm not asking you to spend money, but re do these books are someone has sat down and for a year just thought about the topic. So they've condensed it and they've presented it in a way that makes it very easy to read and you can read these books very relatively quickly if you're a fast reader. But we don't stop there, right? Because software testing, if all you do is focus on testing, you're going to get stuck. So we need to learn software engineering design processes. At this point in time, this I think is one of the easiest books that's an inroad into the design process for software, domain-driven design. And again, there's domain-driven design websites. There's plenty of talks on YouTube. Watch those, read those. And if you're interested, then get this because software testing fits into the development process. And very often the software development process that we use is custom for every environment. Therefore, we have to flex testing to fit in there. So we have to know as much as possible. In fact, that's not true. The more that we know about the software development process, the more we can tailor our testing process to fit in there. So because I started as a programmer and designer and analysis, I have some of those skill sets already and find it much easier to flex my test approach. If I didn't have those, I would have to learn. Coming into software testing is not about just learning testing. It's about learning the process of software development, why we test within that and how to test more effectively. And we have to take ownership of our testing to do that. When we come through, certainly in the modern world, you probably want to start learning how to code at some point. So you may want to read kind of books that I've been writing, Java for testers, automating and testing a REST API, or just any other programming book that resonates with you. Because if you learn how to code, once you've learned how to test, then you start having more opportunities in how you approach testing. That's all. It's not that you're trying to become a programmer. It's not that you're trying to do automated execution of entire applications. You're just giving yourself another tool another way of approaching your work that can help. That's all. Plus it rounds you off more as a, a kind of software development professional. And I'm really strong on that. We need to round ourselves off as software development professionals, but we have a testing focus within there. But to get started, focus on software testing, right? The key to being a good software tester is to learn software testing. That means the techniques and the processes you're probably going to be encouraged to pursue a certification to get started. And that might be important if that's the only way that you've got of getting a job. If that's the only way you've got of getting a foot in the door. Right? I hope, and I hope that that's not the way that you have to get a job. I hope that you can get a job by demonstrating that you've read some of the books, that you're interested, you've watched YouTube, you've actually tested some open source software, that you've created a GitHub account and you've started creating logs of the testing that you have done and the defects that you have raised against open source software, that you have a blog that demonstrates and um, book reviews for the books that you've read, that your thoughts on those books. All of those, I hope, are a much better way of getting a foot in the door than doing certification. I don't value the certification very much. I think it's very expensive for training that may not cover what you need. I'm not gonna say any more about that. I don't value it as a, as a route in, but for a lot of people, that's their filtering process for CVs. So you're gonna to have to make a tough decision at some point if you want to get into software testing and are really struggling, do you get the certification to help you get in or do you find a better way of presenting your software testing skill sets and hope that eventually there's a company that sees that and wants to recruit those people. And usually there is, right? Usually, certainly if you're at the, the more junior level, people struggle to hire good testers. So if you can demonstrate that you understand testing and that you've been doing the work and that you've got evidence that you can test, I think you will be able to get hired as a junior software tester without having certification. Now let's get real here. Software testing is still viewed as an entry level job. I see uh, some companies advertising for 
programmers with three to four years experience, testers with three to four years experiences, and the salaries are like that. Developers are getting paid more than software testers in some organizations because it is still viewed as an entry level and unskilled job. It's up to us as testers to demonstrate that that is not the case and that we have the skills. And then sometimes you're gonna take something that's low just to get a foot in the door. It's our job once we've got a foot in the door to control our careers, right? Your control, your career is gonna be limited purely by your ability to identify opportunities to advance and your ability to be able to take them up because you may not have done the work that allows you to. Company over there is looking for a performance tester. If you haven't done any performance testing, haven't investigated it, haven't explored or experimented with any performance testing tools, but you want to do performance testing, why should they employ you? You take control of your career and you work towards that. And yes, that does mean effort and time and lunch hours just spent learning. <laughs> People who have worked with me have seen me not go out for lunch, but just sit at my desk learning stuff because that's what I did. Now, one of the benefits of software testing still being viewed as an entry level job is it's usually easier for people who haven't done software testing or haven't done software programming or any computer science to move into software testing. That's why we have so many people from business analysis, music, history, whatever else, it, because software testing is about thought processes, modeling, and communication. And when the right employer sees that, there's a good chance of getting into that. But that's because underpinning software testing. What we're looking for is creativity, tenacity, problem exploration, problem investigation, problem solving, a questioning mind. Very similar skills for all the parts of software development, but in testing in particular, <laughs> that ability to question and just not have a single point, not a fixed point of view is really important. All right, so at some point you're gonna to need to get into the right company. You can start with any company you want, but once you've paid your dues, once you've got hands-on experience, when you've got some tool knowledge, once you've mastered a technology like web or mobile or desktop or APIs, whichever one, and once you've got a good grounding in testing, so you understand the terminology, you understand the techniques, you know how to apply them and use them. It's time, if your company is not a good one, to move companies because your company is gonna hold you back if there's not opportunities for exploring your technical knowledge, using new technologies, moving into the areas that you're interested in, doing more automated execution, doing performance testing, expanding into um, security testing. You're working in a company where you are writing test cases, you're writing test scripts, you're putting everything in a test management tool, you're not really doing exploratory or investigative work. That's not really testing. And that is the lowest point in what we class as software testing. And it's a vulnerable position and it's not a good career path. If you're in that career path, you're basically going, I need to get out of this and I need to get into management. That doesn't have to be the career path. You can get a career path by becoming a better tester and moving into a better organization that values testing. Now that's very often the case if you're working at one of those big consultancies that's putting out, hi, testing is a great job, where they're, you're essentially an outsourced vendor for people's testing, which means it's very documentation heavy and it's very, not even evidence-based, it's just have you followed these steps? Have you followed our process? So it doesn't adapt to the software development process. It's very often squeezed for time. It's very often a horrible way to work. So to escape, we need to focus on testing as a problem solving activity, modeling systems, exploring systems, looking for risk, uh, building experiments and how we test them, boosting your coding skills to give you extra options to just automate some tasks of, um, I mean, when I started, I automated the report generation that the management wanted. I automated the creation of test scripts that were mandated in our process because it was taking so long to write them, they were a complete waste but I had a model and I just went through that model, built the test scripts automatically because I had programming skills that could augment my testing process. Learning how systems are architected so that we can pull them apart, understand where the risks are and that we can test at more deeper levels. Focus on testing as a questioning process, learning how to identify ambiguity and requirements and challenge them in ways that people take notice, but they don't exclude you from the conversation. These are hard skills. People class them soft skills, but these are hard skills to learn. And if you can master those, you have a huge opportunity for moving into different sectors and for they're certainly important skills for moving into management. When you're learning testing, learn to focus on the outcomes of testing and understand what they are rather than the processes. 
Right? Testing is not test cases, test scripts. Testing is, I want to explore these paths through the system. How many ways have I got of identifying those paths and working out what variation I have to do in them? If your only approach is test scripts, you are limited in your way of achieving that outcome. So learn to identify what the outcomes are, experiment different ways of doing, of, of generating those outcomes. Learn about agile, because we're going to move to more agile processes in more and more industries. And take control of your processes to help make them more agile, regardless of what project you're in. So that when you're going for those jobs, for agile jobs, even if you haven't worked in agile before, you're able to explain how you took ownership of your work to make it more agile, to make it more lean, to make it add more value more effectively, more quickly. Right. So in order to escape the bad roles, you have to build your experience as essentially a software engineer. Round it off, learn as much about testing as you can, be able to communicate it. But always remember that as you're rounding off your experience, you're focused on improving as a software tester. Right? If you want to be a tester, that's your main skill set. That's your main focus. Even if you learn how to code, even if you learn how to design, even if you learn architecture, even if you learn communication, testing for a while is still going to be your focus. After 20 plus years, you might discover that your programming skills are as good as programmers that have only been programmers for five or 10 years. Because I've got 20 plus years programming experience now. I have the same level of programming skills as some of the lead programmers out there. That's a natural extension just by working in the industry for enough time. Take a long term view, focus on testing, build your skill set out. But don't aim within two years to have mastered testing and automation and design and requirements analysis because you won't have mastered any of them. At the start, focus on mastering testing to the best extent you can, then augment, augment it and just build it out. So if you've looked at the industry, you've looked at should you automate? At the start, the answer is, well, if you've got a programming background, then use your programming background as you learn how to test. So automating parts of your work is going to be a natural extension to that. That doesn't mean you learn how to automate through the GUI. That doesn't mean you have to learn how to do page objects and all these abstractions, because that's going to distract from the testing learning. It means that you learn how to build little tools for analyzing log files, generating data, all that kind of stuff. You harness your programming skills in testing. But over time, that will make it easier for you to learn how to automate. I don't think that you probably want your first job in software testing to be automating because you haven't learned how to test at that point. So you're going to automate. You probably, you might be able to automate well, but you probably won't be able to do automating for testing particularly well because you don't know testing. So really you're just a, a junior programmer. You haven't really got the testing part, but a lot of companies don't realize that. So it may be that that's the best way to get a job. Now I can't tell you not to do that. I can't tell you to do that. I've got programming expertise. I can automate. I think, but if you're focused on software testing, the automating part is not the most relevant thing. But if you can program, it might help you get in. So use whatever skills you've got. If you've got a skill, if you've studied history, your understanding of, uh, depends what type of history it is, but human interaction, why people make decisions, understanding that you can look back at trends and see how they possibly impact the future will be useful to you in testing. If you studied physics, your ability to do experiments will help you in testing. Whatever skills you've got, harness them and use them in your software test. So fundamentally, learn how to test as your core, but learn everything else as well. But take your time doing it. The important point is to control your career, identify opportunities within the companies you work for or outside the company and target those with learning. Be very specific about your career. Certainly in the early days, take ownership of it and experiment with as many things as you can because that gives you a broad range of experience. I think there's still a lot of scope in software testing for learning effectively what you have to do. And I think it's still a good career, but you have to own it. It is possible in software testing to get stuck on dreadful jobs in dreadful companies doing the most mundane and horrible work. Now, equally, those same companies hire programmers to do dreadful coding, dreadfully mundane coding in horrible languages with horrible processes and horrible IDEs. So it's not really the role that is bad, right? Software testing can be enormously flexible, challenging, rewarding, technical, however far you want to push it but you have to take ownership and control of that. And if you're considering just starting out, there is a lot of scope here. There's so much to learn, but it's not an entry level 
unskilled. This is an easy way to make money. I'll do a training course for two days. I'll get a job that will be well paid, that will satisfy me long term. You're going to have to push it to get that satisfaction out there. And I hope that if you're considering software testing, you are prepared to push it because the industry needs good testers who do learn, who do push it, who have a career trajectory that is going to push testing and software development forward. And I hope that's you.